In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the limited space of your bedroom and a limited budget to construct and put together a home office and awesome gaming and entertainment system. So this video is designed for someone who has a small bedroom of about 10 by 12 feet, so 120 square feet, and a budget of around a thousand, maybe eleven hundred dollars. If you have a little more in your budget, up to $1,400, that will allow you to buy a 43-inch uh, TV for viewing movies, and that will complete your home entertainment system. First, I'm going to give you a quick tour of my bedroom. It's basically an IKEA bedroom. I have a Malm queen-size bed and Morgadol IKEA mattress. Uh, over here, I have a keyboard for playing piano and composing music. As part of my home entertainment system, I have this Sanyo 43-inch TV. This is my office chair, home office chair, and my computer desk and computer setup with a printer. Over here, I have a Canon printer, and here is my IKEA Calex shelving unit. It's a 2x4, and I have some some of the storage boxes that, that you can buy in addition to the, the shelving unit. Okay, so now we're going to get into the computer configuration. But before we do that, here's my cat's basket. He loves it. And here's his cozy box over here that he likes to hang out in. Right now he's under the bed, so he won't be in this video probably. Here I've got my cost list loaded up, and so I have all the items that you're, well, we're going to evaluate today and the prices for each item. First three are from Ikea. That's the furniture, the Mickey desk, and the companion drawer unit, which clock in at $50 and $60. And then the Flinton swivel chair that you'll see in the video is also from Ikea, and it's $70. Um, from eBay, I have my, my earbuds, uh, Sony earbuds, uh, an item, a uh, four-port USB hub from Micro Center, um, although you can get those anywhere pretty much eBay, Walmart, wherever. Um, another uh, four-port USB from eBay. Uh, HDMI bi-directional splitter switch. Now this is really cool. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and you can see on the screen the various other items. Uh, printer from Walmart, printer scanner uh, combined. Uh, my Logitech G213 Prodigy keyboard. It's an awesome keyboard. I highly recommend it. And that's about 46 bucks on eBay. Uh, I have a wired mouse, just a cheap old Logitech. Uh, that was 14 bucks. And my computer system, I just upgraded. And this video is designed for people who are thinking about upgrades um, or people who already have a laptop and want to convert it into a desktop system using a monitor. Um, I, I bought a uh, basically an entry-level gaming laptop which is relatively speedy. Uh, it has a AMD A12 processor which is equivalent to a Intel i7. Um, got it for just under $500. So it was a pretty good deal on eBay. Uh, came refurbished. Um, and I have as my monitor, which, which you're looking at now, is a Vizio 32 inch uh, LED TV. It's full de uh, high def 1080p, and that was about 231 at Walmart, and that includes the three year replacement plan. Uh, also, have a, a entry level 2 1 speaker system with a woofer, 37 bucks at Best Buy, um, and you'll need some various. HDMI cables and USB cables for around $40 or less. You might try a thrift store for those too because you can get them pretty cheap. So the total without the 43-inch TV for movies is going to be around $1,140. If you go with a cheaper 43-inch new LED TV, um, I went with a Sanyo. It's, it's been very reliable and a very good TV, good color and good quality picture. Uh, just under 
at Walmart if you get the three-year uh, service replacement plan. So your total with a TV for movies in your bedroom is going to be just over $1,400. Now the things that I'm excluding from the costs um, and items in this video are the Calyx shelves that I'm not including. I'm not including the cable, uh, internet connection, or the the uh, Wi-Fi router. Um, I'm not including a stand or something to put your TV on. Um, I'm also not including my keyboard uh, because that's you know that's not everybody's going to be composing music or playing the piano. Um, but the things I am including. So the things I am including in this video are all the things that you just saw on my list. So my 43 inch Sanyo TV, which is an option for a home entertainment system that's really nice if you want to uh, watch movies and TV. And if I back out a little bit, you can see here's my IKEA desk right here, the Mickey desk. Have all my stuff in it organized into Ziploc bags. Um, I should have gotten the uh, divider system or the container system they have. There's an insert you can put into the drawer, but uh, haven't gotten that yet. Okay, so here's my Sony earbuds, my headphones. Extremely uh, high quality. These um, have, I guess, the, what is it, the neodymium magnets in it and uh, so it's got super ultra deep bass for earbuds they're really nice and then here's my Vizio TV it's 1080p full HD which I'm using as a monitor um, of course it's, you're not, you're not going to get it as crisp as 4k if you have a 4k setup but uh, for home office and for a entry-level gaming system it's pretty good so this is really an awesome uh, configuration a way, way to set up your home office system if you like a lot of real estate 1080p gives you pretty substantial real estate and uh, right now I've got Blade Runner playing and as you can see the video is pretty good um, so I'm gonna launch a few applications so you can see exactly how much real estate you have and how much space on the screen. So this is Excel, so this is uh, just the spreadsheet that I'm using for this video, but you can see there's just tons of room. Like if you have a larger spreadsheet, let me pull up a larger one. Okay, so I pulled up, this is part of my financial spreadsheet, but you can see how much stuff you can display on a, an Excel spreadsheet on, you know, and you don't have to scroll around that much. Um, it's pretty nice. Um, so you could go with a 4K screen, and I'd say if, if you want to, go ahead. Um, the only thing you need to watch out for is the increase in price, because you're gonna have to get a, a better graphics card in your laptop or your, your uh, CPU. And also on a 32 inch screen, you know, it might look pretty good. You'd have a lot more real estate. Basically you have, with a 4K screen, you're gonna have four times the real estate because you have twice as many pixels horizontally and twice as many vertically. I haven't tried it, so I, I couldn't tell you if I could recommend it or not. You won't find any 4K 32 inch TVs and 32 inch I would say is the max you want to go on a monitor when you're sitting up close because uh, you have to turn your head and your eyes move around a lot to see the edges of the screen and uh, yeah it's just 32 inch 32 inches I would say is the max size for a monitor um, unless you you're gonna place it a little further away or mount it on a wall or something uh, but anyway, you got a lot, a lot of real estate with 1080p full HD, um, and I highly recommend this uh, system the way it is with a 32-inch TV set on 1080p. So here's an example of how much room you have in Photoshop. 
I mean, I'm looking at, this is a book cover that I designed and the actual size on the screen is the, the real size of the cover. It's literally eight and a half by 11 on the screen. Well, there's two, you know, front and back. So, uh, 11 by 17 um, on the screen. So it's really cool to edit stuff in Photoshop and create art in Photoshop that's real size on the screen, same as um, printed. So this um, application is called Sonar X2. It's uh, basically a music recording studio. Um, on my laptop computer and without this larger uh, monitor, um, without the extra real estate, it would be impossible to use this application because uh, all of the controls and panels and various um, instrumentation in there takes up a lot of space. And here it's loading up. So you can see these are the tracks and I have plenty of space left over if I wanted to add more tracks without scrolling. And this is the piano roll so I can, although I still have to scroll in with this to um, get the various keys on the keyboard, but it, still having this amount of real estate is pretty nice. Oh, let me give you a, a, a example of the sound system I have. So it's a Logitech Z313 uh, setup with two tweeter speakers and one woofer. So I can't play you any typical music that I, I would play on my um, through Winamp because it's all copyrighted and they'll flag it. Google will flag it as a copyrighted uh, piece. So let me play you some of my own music. Okay, so let me show you this mess down here. Um, you know, if you, if you get a different monitor uh, that doesn't have the same configuration with the, f the four feet that are on either side of the screen, um, the way this worked out, I mean, geometrically it's perfect for this setup because um, it straddles the laptop that I have and it's a 17.3 inch screen. It's an HP. Um, but if you don't have that, you could get one of those, um, basically a shelf that would go above your computer. And then if, if your uh, monitor has a base that's in the middle, you could just rest the base on that shelf. But what I did was to angle the screen back a little bit, um, I put feet under this, uh, under the, I put risers under the feet. I would call these risers. Uh, they're basically an inch high on either side. Sorry, I got a th digital thermometer there. Um, and so that elevates the front feet an inch and then it, you'll see it gives it a, a slight angle, um, which is a little bit better for viewing. Uh, it's a bit of a mess with cables and cords because everything I get is wired. I don't want to deal with batteries and stuff dying like the mice and the keyboard. So. Um, here's the control for my Logitech speakers, um, the headphones insert here. I have one USB hub here, it's a, the Sabrent, and I have the inland USB hub here, so I can, uh, you see I got a external drive plugged in right now. Um, and then this cool guy is my HDMI splitter switch. Um, so if you, you can use the, the one input for 
Well, it goes either way. You can have one HDMI input, which splits to two outputs, and then you can select between the two. So right now I have it on my monitor, um, but if I want to, I could switch and, and uh, select my my 43 inch TV as my output. Let me give you a, uh, show you an example of that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it to my larger TV, and then that takes the signal off of my monitor. And then over here, I'm going to select the source as HDMI 2. And now I have, basically I'm seeing the exact same image on my large T, my Sanyo 43 inch TV. Um, it's exactly the same and I can throw all my icons at. That's kind of weird. I wonder if it's extending. Display settings. Huh. For some reason, I think it may have extended it. Yeah, okay, so that was a little bit of a mishap. Um, it was actually extending the display, and I guess it's a different setting for each TV each monitor uh, so uh, basically I went back looked on my laptop screen and I reset it to uh, duplicate displays as you can see right here that's the setting that you're gonna have to use uh, you can extend it but it can be a headache as you can see okay so now it's working properly so this is my computer monitor the, my TV that I'm using as a computer monitor my 32 inch and then over here is my 43 inch so you can see I mean this is massive great for watching movies I'll show you in a second so that's the story with the HDMI switch awesome little little device and you can you can reverse it so you can have two HDMI inputs and then only one output and then you can select between the two inputs so it's a really handy device very very clever very ingenious so here's the movie on my monitor, my 32 inch TV, and now I'm going to switch it over. And here it is on the 43 inch. And the sound's coming out through my speaker system, Logitech Z313. And I also have my TV configured so I can uh, well, I'm using the component cable from my cable box, and so I can watch TV on it also, and movies that are on uh, cable channels. Okay, so you're probably wondering about the laptop that I'm using as a desktop. Uh, the reason I like this setup is because if I need to, I can go ahead and just uh, unplug everything and take it with me on the road, take it to restaurant, use the Wi-Fi there, do some work on it. So I have the portability that I like. So let me give you some of the specs. So this is a, a basically an entry-level gaming laptop. Um, it's a 1600 by 900 pixel screen, which has been the standard for 17.3 inch laptops for about the last five to seven years. Um, now they're coming out with uh, 4K and full HD screens so it's not quite that resolution um, so be be advised of that uh, the price clocks in just under 500 bucks on eBay for a refurbished model I went with refurbished because I feel that those have all the bugs worked out of them and so basically you're getting a new machine or slightly used machine so this HP is the the model number is 17-Y027CY, I think. Hold on. Yeah, so it's it's an HP. It's The model number is 
17-Y027CY. So you can look up all the specs online. Um, but basically you're going to get an AMD A12 processor uh, with four cores and it's got uh, six graphic cores and the AMD Radeon R7 GPU. Uh, clock speed is 2.5 gigahertz and it, it'll go upwards to about 3.5 on turbo. Comes with 12 gigs of RAM, uh, 2 terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive. It's a Seagate. Uh, so those are the basics. I mean, it's a really good machine. I've, I've, been, I've only had it for a couple of weeks now, but I'm very happy with it. So it's got a 17.3 inch diagonal screen on it, um, full size keyboard. What else? Yeah, so it's got one HDMI out. It has three USB ports, um, one jack for a combination of microphone and headphones or speakers. And it has over on this side, it's got a SD card reader so you can put in your uh, camera media cards. So you're probably wondering, well, do you have enough room? After you have a bed and a TV and a dresser and shelving unit, and computer desk, and drawers and everything in here? And the answer is you do have plenty of room. Um, also I have this uh, floor protector. That's an Ikea item also. I think it's called Colon. K-O-L-O-N. Very handy to, to uh, preserve your carpet. But yeah, so... I mean, I have plenty of space. I got my drawer. Uh, yeah, the, the, the cables and stuff, it's a little crowded. I've got my printer here, printer, scanner. And you know how this works. It's a subscription service. Um, it's a good little printer. It's an MG2520 by Canon. Uh, you know, they cost, they basically give them away. They cost $30 and they get you for the ink. It's a subscription service. So you're, you're paying for the ink because the, the ink cartridges cost 20 bucks a pop and you need black and color. Uh, yeah, so that's where they get you on the ink. Uh, cheap printer, but it works great. I've had this printer for more than a year and it's still in service. I scan stuff all the time. And uh, as far as like how much you get out of a cartridge, uh, I usually keep it on black and print only in black and you get a few hundred pages out of it. But yeah, this is what it looks like using um, in this setup. And you know, like I said, you can you have your home office. Uh, you can scan and print. You can play movies, uh, play games. Um, I have a drawer right here on my drawer unit where I keep my hard drives and receipts. Envelopes and stamps, uh, printer paper, and I rarely open this one, but I got uh, blank DVD media and sleeves and some other stuff in there. And the colon chair, or sorry, the flinton chair, I highly recommend it. I mean, I can sit on this chair for hours. And it's still comfortable. My butt doesn't get sore. It swivels. It's got wheels that lock in place um, when it's not in use, when you're not sitting on it. When you sit on it, it frees up the wheels so you can move around. It's really a cool chair for 70 bucks. And if you want to see all the reviews on my IKEA items, the things that I purchased, just check out my YouTube channel, Activity10CC. And you'll find reviews of all of these IKEA products on there. Yeah, so I almost forgot the keyboard. This is really an outstanding keyboard. It's a Logitech Prodigy G G213. Um, it's backlit, so you can see the keys at night in the darkness of your room. You don't have to have the light on, um, so you can be computing quite happily without lights. I just got this keyboard, so I can't give you any details on longevity or uh, you know how it's gonna how long it's gonna perform 
Uh, but it seems to be rather well built. It's got a uh, USB cable that's woven uh, cloth fiber and virtually indestructible. Um, the feel of the keyboard is really nice. Um, uh, the position of the keys are, it's laid out quite well, so it feels very comfortable. And it has a, a palm rest here. Um, it's got legs, I'm not using them because I'm using my laptop uh, to support the back end of the keyboard, uh, but it does have legs, you can prop it up. Uh, overall, I'm very satisfied with it. It's a good keyboard.